Okay everybody, today I'm going to be showing you how to install specifically a Harbor Breeze ceiling fan from Lowe's, but um, ignore my son's careless use of the knife to open the box. But basically this applies to most any ceiling fan. A lot of the techniques and things you're going to see here today would help you install practically any ceiling fan. But today we're specifically installing a Harbor Breeze from Lowe's, and, and I know Lowe's has a thousand different models. So I'm, I'm speeding this up a little bit for you, so you, just so you don't have to bother to watch us unpack the box. When it comes to things like these, I'm a little OCD or anal. I really like to take everything out of the box and make sure that we're not missing anything before we get started. It would absolutely drive me crazy to start this process and find out something was missing and have to run to Lowe's and pick up a part or return it. So I always like to pull everything out of the box, make sure we're not missing anything. And that's what you see us doing right now. So again, I want to reiterate, this process is pretty similar for almost any ceiling fan. And, and even though Lowe's carries 100 different models of Harbor Breeze, um, this will work with almost any of those. And I'm not going to be going by the instruction manual per se. A lot of what you're going to see uh, today, the order we're going to do this in, is in my opinion the order that makes the most sense. And not necessarily the order in which the instruction manual tells you to do it. And the one we're installing today also has a light kit. So if the ceiling fan you're installing does not have a light kit, simply ignore it. Just extra steps that you won't need. So as you see, we've started by unpacking everything. And now the next step would be actually let's start assembling this and getting it ready to go up on the ceiling. So the first step on a lot of ceiling fans, especially the Harbor Breeze, you've got to attach the bracket to the blade. And most blades, um, I'd say for the most part, most blades only have, have a particular side that should be facing down. But some blades are interchangeable. You can flip them upside down and change their color or texture. These you wouldn't want to. You have this cheap plastic side on the top that you see here. But the bottom side you can't see, which is the side you'll see when it's placed on the ceiling, is actually the look you want. So just three screws. Make sure you the side is facing down that, that you prefer to see. So we're just going to tighten those screws up. Again, depending on what, what type of fan and how many blades it has, you're going to want to do this for all the blades in advance. And you'll see, you'll see my handy dandy son take care of that now. Luckily, this is at much faster rate than he works. If he worked this fast, um, it would be magnificent. Actually, if any of us worked this fast, it would be great. So watch him put the screws in the rest of the blades. And then we are ready to get started with the rest of the assembly. So the next step is we have the fan motor here. So I'm just going to remove this little piece of paper. And there's a rubber grommet right here that you need to push out with your finger. And that's going to give you access to get a screwdriver down. And you see the screw right there. And we're going to use a drill just because there's a lot of screws today. Basically what you're taking out are these little kind of like spacers. They're um, installed from the factory just to protect the fan during shipment. And you have to, you have to remove them. Um, just remove them and throw them away. You don't need to keep them. So you have to, you kind of have to spin the motor a little bit to line the screw, to line the screw up with this hole from the rubber grommet you removed, and then of course remove it. And then once you get all of these, you can just kind of throw them away. You're not going to need these spacers again. Again, just just to protect the the motor during shipment. And you're going to find that this hole is also the hole you're going to use to install the fan blades when we get to that point. Um, that's a much diff more difficult procedure than this. So once you get those all removed, this is the top canopy. This is the part that will actually be flush against the ceiling. So this is the canopy and the bracket that holds your ceiling fan. And you'll notice it's got, you see two screws on this side. There are also two screws on the other side. One of those screws on each side is part of a slot, an L-shaped slot, this one right here. You're not going to remove that screw, you're just going to loosen it. This other screw, however, you're going to have to remove. So remove this screw, and then you're going to flip it and repeat on the other side. So the screw in the slot, you just, the L-shaped slot, you just loosen that screw, and then the other screw you have to remove. Save these screws, you're going to need them um, later to attach this canopy. This is just the bracket that holds the fan and the canopy that hides everything makes everything look nice and pretty so you don't see the bracket and wires on the ceiling. So once you do that, you're going to separate the actual bracket from the uh, canopy. And now we have our down rod. 
Now, depending upon your install, you may have a longer down rod, but they're pretty much the same. So you're going to remove the little, basically the safety um, pin that makes sure it doesn't fall out. Remove the pin from the down rod. Again, yours could be much longer than mine. Um, and you can buy differing lengths at Lowe's for almost any ceiling fan. So we're going to take our down rod and we need to assemble it with these two, the big and small canopy. We're going to start by removing the green ground wire from the down rod. And then the large canopy, the down rod goes in this way. And then unfortunately, my brilliant son is off camera, but he's attaching the smaller one in the opposite direction and you'll, you'll basically see the outcome. There's nothing magical happening. So basically those just kind of um, are opposite directions on top. Uh, sandwiching the down rod. Then remove the rubber band or wire tire, whatever's holding your wires together. Now this one you'll notice has three wires. If you just have a standard ceiling fan, it may only have two. That third wire is for the light kit. Again, if you don't have a light kit, simply expect to only see two wires. And then once you get the wires um, removed, you're going to feed them through in this direction. So you're going to feed them through in the direction of the smaller canopy so that they come out the top with the green ground wire that I had you remove just a minute ago. Um, so pull them through because our next step is we've got to get this down rod actually attached to the fan motor. So pull the wires through, make sure there's not much slack. And then on, in this case, you're going to see there's two screws right here on the fan motor. And you're not going to remove them. You, you can if you want to, but you don't have to. Just back them out enough so that they're flush with the inside. Um, you're basically just trying to make enough room so that the down rod you see on the right will slide into the hole. And then you'll later tighten these back up. And these aren't really for physical security. They're not actually holding the fan up. Their main job is simply to keep the fan from shaking and, and wobbling to and fro when it's on the ceiling. So stick the down rod in. And the down rod has a hole in it that you need to line up with the hole in the, um, basically in that fan bracket right there. And, and we'll tilt it on the side so you can, you can see what I'm talking about. So you have to line the hole in the down rod up with the hole in the, the base of the fan motor so that you can stick that pin through the pin that we just removed the the safety cotter pin from so you're going to push that that steel pin back through and you may have to kind of shake it and and jiggle it so that the holes line up perfectly to get the pin all the way through this is actually what holds the fan to the down rod and then of course the down rods attached to the bracket on the ceiling so it's extremely important that you have this pin um, physically secure and once you get it pushed through like this make sure you insert the the safety cutter pin you do not want this to vibrate out those other screws that we're getting ready to tighten may hold it but I don't want to stake my life on it I certainly don't want to risk the wires holding it up even though they probably would so now that we've got that finished we're going to take these two screws these are the screws that we just backed out a little bit ago and we're going to Retighten them. You don't have to tighten them. You don't want to over tighten them. You just want them to be nice and snug. And again, their purpose is basically to keep the fan from from wobbling. So they're not actually they're not actually holding the fan to the down rod. Um, they probably do a little bit of that, but their main goal is so it doesn't wobble. Now this is the light kit. If you don't have a light kit, ignore this, but we do. So on the light kit. There are three screws. You want to go ahead and back these out just to be prepared. Three little tiny screws. Remove them. And more importantly than removing them is uh, save them because you are going to need them later. And once you get that finished, now we can move to actually installing the fan. All, all we've done so far is prep the fan to be installed. Now we, now we get to the nitty gritty. So this is the case I have. I have just a standard dome um, globe. Your case may be different, but you can probably relate. Uh, probably a similar situation that you have. I'm just going to remove the globe, just like you would if you were changing the light bulbs in it. So ever how it is that you would remove yours. Um, and in, in my case, it has not only the uh, decorative screw, but mine actually has a, the little safety screw underneath it that you have to unscrew to get the globe off. Um, so whatever it takes for you to, to get access to this on yours, yours may be a little bit different than mine, almost surely it will be. 
but you got to get the glow ball first then the next step pretty easy as well or at least in my case I'm just gonna take the light bulbs out um, and I'm just doing this you don't have to but I'm doing this because the screws are underneath the light bulbs that I have to get to to remove this and before you go any further I recommend that you not only cut the light switch off but actually um, make sure you shut the breaker off that's powering this light um, you don't want to accidentally electrocute yourself especially when you're standing on a ladder because even if you get shocked mildly you could fall off the ladder so in my case there are only only a couple of screws here that are actually holding this to the ceiling and I'm just gonna I'm gonna loosen those screws again I'm using the drill just because we've got so much to do today and if I were using a standard screwdriver my arm and hand would be exhausted by now and then once you loosen those screws you just need to in my case I just have to twist this and it'll come down with nothing but the wires holding it and that's probably gonna be very similar to the case in yours and then I'm gonna remove these wire nuts again make sure you've got the breaker off so you do not get shocked while you're up here I'm just gonna remove these wire nuts if you're not familiar with wire nuts they're just like any other um, nut you turn them to the left to loosen them to the right to tighten them so I'm loosening these up and you'll notice in my case these I've actually got three I've got four wires coming out of the ceiling in your case you may only have three but even though I didn't have a ceiling fan already my house was wired for a ceiling fan and that's what the red wire you see is so you have the bare wire which is your ground wire you have the white and black wire which are your the normal two wires you would use for the fan and my red wire specifically is for the light kit that's going to be um, associated with mine you may not have that yours may be the fact where you only have one switch that you turn on and then you have to control the fan and the light using the uh, chains on the fan but mine is not that case so now that we've got that removed I'm going to use a stud finder I need to find the studs surrounding this light box and you may not have this problem the problem I have is that the actual um, mounting box in the ceiling is not large enough to support the ceiling fan bracket. Um, the ceiling fan bracket screw holes are actually wider than it, so I'm only going to be able to attach one of the screws of the ceiling fan bracket to this, and that's not enough. You need both attached, and you need them attached to something pretty secure. So one of them can be attached to the to this actual metal bracket, but the other one's going to need to be into some into a stud or some wood in the ceiling so I, I marked my um stud I'm gonna remove this last wire nut and now I'm putting the ceiling fan bracket up I'm just gonna kind of thread these wires through the hole and you want that screw that I'm I'm pointing you want that the you see the round part at the bottom where the wires are coming out there's an there's a slot in it where you're going to be hanging the fan and you want that slot in general to be facing away from where you're going to be working and you'll you'll understand that more so I've got the first screw in this screw is actually going up into the mounting bracket so this is the old bracket that was holding my light up and that's perfect you know those brackets are secured to the to your studs or your rafters in your ceiling the problem I have is that the other end of this ceiling fan bracket is too long and it can't mount in there but you definitely need both sides attached so I'm going to use basically just like a two at least a two inch wood screw would be my recommendation and I'm going to I'm going to screw this other side into the stud or rafter you need this to be really secure ceiling fans are pretty heavy you do not want this thing to fall so once you get that bracket secure I'm going to tighten up both sides and now now you have the foundation with which to hold the ceiling fan up the next step is actually going to be to hang the fan so I'm going to pull these wires kind of get them out of the way you don't want them in the way of the um, the little slot right here where we're going to be hanging the fan and there's not much to this you're simply taking the plastic ball on the end of the down rod and you're going to slide it into the hanger and now the ceiling fan is supported by the bracket now our next step is going to be we need to wire the fan up so pull all your wires out to one side and if you don't know much about electrical work you don't have to to do this so basically it works like this 
in this case you're going to have two green wires you have one coming from the ceiling fan you have one coming from the down rod um, I'm, I'm sorry one coming from the bracket and then you also have a bare metal just a piece of copper wire coming out of your ceiling and you need to tie those three together those are ground wires so you have one coming from the fan one coming from the ceiling bracket and then a bare wire coming from your ceiling and, and these are just a ground wire so you want to basically twist them all together the best you can then you're going to use a wire nut to attach those three together then your wiring may be different colors but in general at least in this case what you're going to see is I have a black and a white wire which are going to tie to the black and white wire from my ceiling fan using a wire nut just like I'm doing here but the one exception I may have that you may not have is I have a red wire coming from the ceiling and a, I have the blue wire coming from the ceiling fan. The blue wire from the ceiling fan is the wire for the light kit. So in my case, I'm going to tie that to my red wire. You may or may not have this. If you don't have this, you're simply going to tie the blue wire from the ceiling fan. Um, you would tie that in with the other two wires that you have coming um, from the ceiling. But I would imagine most people today installing a ceiling fan are probably getting a light kit. You probably plan on installing one at some point. If you don't have that third wire, what you're going to end up doing is you're going to have one switch in your house, in your room, that when you turn on, it turns the fan and light on. And then you have to use the chains to control everything else. So once you get all the wires hooked up, you're going to take this canopy and you're just going to lift it up and, and kind of um, spin it into those slots. Unfortunately, my son, the great cameraman, is missing that, so it just spins into place, and then you'll tighten those two screws that we loosened earlier, the screws that are part of the slot. You're going to tighten those two, and then you have the two screw holes, one on either side, where you're going to need to put the screws back in um, the canopy. And this is just what makes everything look pretty. This is what keeps the uh, wires and bracket from showing at the top. And you may have to move around your ladder to get to them, so get all those screws in, and now we have... Our next step is to attach the fan blades. I'm going to speed through this as well. This procedure, this is probably the, this sucks. That's the only way to word it. So you have to use the hole from that plastic rubber grommet you detached earlier in the video when you had to remove the spacers. You have to use that hole. You have to hold this blade up and insert the screw through that tiny hole um, into the blade. And it's just really kind of a pain, especially since you're working over your head, you're working on a ladder. Um, it's easy to kind of get fatigued and exhausted. Your hands are going to be aching at this point. But you don't have an option. you got to get the blades attached. So you just have to keep rotating it to use that same little hole. And then eventually you'll have all your blades attached. And now you have what looks like a ceiling fan. And we're on the home stretch now. Everything's easy from here on out for the most part. So our next step is, in our case, we're going to be attaching a light kit. Mm -hmm. So um, this particular light kit, it has two wires that you need to, you need to connect. And thankfully, you don't have to use wire nuts or anything. You're, I'm going to hold this so you can, you can see we've got two wires. And they're the same color on both sides, so you know which color goes where. And you're just going to slip them into the connectors. They, are, they have connectors built into both sides, both on the ceiling fan side and the light kit side. You're just going to attach those, those wires. Um, they just slide into each other and snap. Um, not much to them. Again, it's helpful when you have a helper who can hold one side while you snap them in. But you, this can be done by yourself. People, people do it all the time by themselves. So once you get those wires connected, the next step is you're going to lift this light kit up. <clears throat> You'll need to line the holes up with the holes in the ceiling fan. And this is where you're going to put those three screws back um, from much earlier in the video. So let's get a better angle. Um, once you get this in place, um, you may want to use a screwdriver instead of a drill. You'll see the struggle with using a drill. It's just, just really hard to get up in the to get up in this small area. So right here, you're gonna push the light kit up. Make sure the hole in the light kit lines up with the hole in the fan. And you have these tiny little screws that you have to insert. 
In this case, there were three of them. And again, use whatever is best for you, whether it be a drill or a screwdriver. You're probably going to find a screwdriver easier. Um, our first attempt at using the drill and the screw fell down. And I think our second and third attempt, the screw fell down as well. So learn from our struggle. You'll also notice that um, my son's about to cross thread this in there. I recommend you do not cross thread it. But you'll want to get these, these three screws in and then your light kit will be nice and mounted and literally there is not much left to do after this. Everything else from here on out is pretty easy. So get that mounted and now we're going to we're going to remove this little decorative cap at the bottom. That's what would, this is the cap that would hold the globe up. Just going to remove that. We're going to put our light bulbs in. And this one has the, um, the little candelabra bulbs. So let's get those put in. Then we're going to put our globe up after that. Just kind of thread the chain through your globe. Might help to grab it and stop it from shaking. Apparently my son was not confident that he had screwed those in tightly. So thread the globe through. And now you're going to replace the, the little decorative cap along with the um, decorative screw. Again, this is where it helps to have a second person to help you. You certainly can do it on your own. But there's nothing wrong with asking for help most of the time. So once you get this last screw attached, that'll hold the globe in there. And now most of the fun is done. At this point, we pretty much have a working ceiling fan and light. Um, what, I'm, what we're going to do now is we're going to grab the ceiling fan chain from up here. It's coiled up in a little plastic bag, so we're just going to take that off. And you're going to feed that chain through this little L hook you see hanging off the side of the, the left-hand side of the light. You want to feed that chain through there. To, that keeps the, um, it'll keep the chain out of the way so that the chain's not grinding against the light. It makes the chain a lot easier to pull down. And now we're just attaching the little um, decorative part to the end of the chain, add some weight to it to hold it down so it's not shaking around and also gives you something to grab onto. So you see we're just, see my son struggling with the simplest of tasks. He's gonna be a winner. I'm just gonna attach the chain to it. And once this is complete, our last step realistically is we're just going to test it, make sure that the light and ceiling fan works, and also more importantly, make sure that the fan doesn't fall down or wobble. Most fans also include a balancing kit. If for some reason your fan um, does wobble, um, there's a balancing kit where you can weight the blades individually. So here we go, checking the light, checking the fan. That's it. Hope this helps, guys. Uh, reach out to me if you have any questions. See y'all soon.